Hey YouTube, today I'm going to do Preachers of LA Season 2, Episode 2 and 3. Um, I haven't seen 4 yet, but when I do, I will get it out. Um, for the new people that's watching me, I'm in the hospital. And um, so that's why you see me like this. I'm not usually like this. Um, let me give a disclaimer. I cuss, but I will try not to to cuss as much in this video, being as a church people and all that kind of good stuff. But I'm still be me. Um, they just gave me some stronger meds, so I should be able to get through this. Um, and to everybody telling me to rest, I understand where you're coming from, but this is my therapy of me getting my mind off of all the shit that's going on. And, um, let's get into it. Okay, um, I'm not. I'm gonna be all over the place with this because I don't have no notes. But it's let's, let's talk about Pastor Ron and his wife. Um, they were talking about the thing that happened at the sip and tea, sip and see, whatever you the new modern baby shower with no games and food. I don't know. Um, but she's telling him what happened. Pastor Bishop, sorry, Pastor Bishop, whatever. He can be a little rude sometimes because when she mentioned Loretta, sorry, but when he mentioned Loretta, he was over there like, who? Or some shit. But it was disrespectful to me. But he, she tells him what's going on and how she said that she heard he said that single people couldn't be in a ministry. And he was like, that's not what I said. And I told y'all on that first episode, that's not what he said. I, that ain't what I got out of it. What he was saying was they wasn't married and it didn't look right um, for them to be up there acting like a married couple and they're not. So, you know, he was like, I'm tired of this. We need to have a sit down. So, let's talk about the sit down. So, they had a sit down and immediately you see everybody kind of on. No, before the sit down. Lovette. No, Loretta. All these damn L's. Loretta and Bishop Jones were at the house talking, and they were talking about the same situation. And he told her to, if they come at them, to go in, go hard. And I'm saying, like, you're the man of the situation. Why are you not going hard? That's not for her to be doing that. And if you guys are grown, it shouldn't even have to come to that. So they get to the sit down and... You can see everybody on the fence. You can see everybody is on the fence. Um, but Loretta was a little bit more on the fence than anybody else. So they guess they're talking about the relationship because Bishop and Loretta, I think it was Loretta brought it up. She was saying how, I mean, not Loretta, Lizette, told you them L's, um, they were talking about how um, people would look at them differently if they know these people been together and they're not married. And people would think they're fornicating, so they would think that they're o okay with that. So I think they were coming from with that. And you know, that's just like Pastor Jay telling, that's just like Pastor Jay telling um, Dietrich about how people would look at him for marrying them and they were pregnant and stuff like that. So I got where Bishop then was coming from. Now, did Bishop go in a little bit too hard on her on certain parts? Yes. But Loretta wasn't making a damn situation, a conversation. No better. No better whatsoever. They going at it. He called a girl a Jezebel. I'm like, oh, hell no. That's where I thought Bishop Jones should have stepped in. Because, you know, he was saying how, you know, she, you know, basically take the leadership role in this relationship. She walks all over Bishop Noel Jones. I see that, too. And I do know that he told her he pumped her up to get smart or whatever. But I do see that she, you know, you know, she's a strong-minded person. And I do see that she probably do can't walk um, over him on certain things. Um... But I, like I said, I get where Pastor Ron is coming from because can't nobody tell me that they're not doing stuff. And they've been together 16 years. Especially 
the way men be coming out talking about men need sex and woo 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 and if they're not gonna get it from here they're gonna get it from there then you see them kissing so you can't tell me that they not having sex after 16 fucking years i don't care if it was on and off whatever he hit that he hit that i don't care what nobody said i don't he can come out and say no i didn't and i'm gonna be like you're a damn lie but it's not my business because I don't go to his church. I'm not trying to get him to say, you know me, from my sins. So, hey, I look at this as entertainment. But I do think they're lying. Um, then Loretta was so on the fence to where he came at Pastor Ron talking about, well, you don't have to do it. And I'm like, this ain't your event to make that call. This is not your event. But like he said, well, he, he ended up saying basically at the end of that conversation, I'm not going to be a part of that. Until y'all tell me what's going on in this relationship, I'm not going to be a part of that. And then she was like, well, you don't have to be in all this kind of stuff. And then they brought Bishop Noel Jones and asked him, do you want me to be a part of that? He like, do you want to? He like, do you want me to? And he said, yes. Oops, slapping Loretta's face. But Loretta, you kind of spoke out of turn because first of all, that's not your event to be saying that you don't even want him there. Um, and I, she gave them her credentials of why why she was certified to do this event, but I still get where they're coming from. I'm sorry. I get it. I totally get where Pastor Ron and them coming from. A lot of people are saying it's not their business. It's not their business. But when you associate my name with a certain situation, it kind of is their business. Now, if they wasn't working together, doing this event together, then okay, maybe it wouldn't be. But, well, maybe it would, because like I said, he's a pastor. And pastors are supposed to lead by an example. And I can't, you can't lead me when you're fornicating. I'm sorry, you can't. Um... So that was over with, with that whole lunch, little bullshit. Um, let's talk about Dietrich and his whole family or whatever. So, you know, they're at the park. They playing with the kids. He playing on the side with the kids. That was cute. Both of the mamas was there. I thought that was cute. Doing that commercial little, little break thing. When they was doing that singing, I was cracking up. Because I was like, ooh, they all. But you can tell they all have, like, individual voices. But, um, yeah, they talked about the whole thing with the bag. Oh, she told him. She didn't, well, they talked about the sip and tea or whatever. And they talked about how she told him that she made um, Sister Lavette to baby Scott mom. Also, Lizette told Ron about the, her being a baby godmom, and he was cool with it. Um, he was shocked, but he was cool with it. But the way Dietrich responded, because the way she said it was, um, I heard a word from God or God, you know, something about God being irrelevant in that whole situation. And he was like, well, you were supposed to talk to me. And I get that. But, hey, he said she talked to God, and this is what God led her to do. And so then he was on board because, you know, um, that doesn't have any kids. So he was on board with that. Um, let's talk about him and his mom. They were walking down the street, and they were talking or whatever. And she was telling them how proud she was of them and how she was proud of um, the way Dominique take care of the kids and stuff like that. And. She told them to go see a therapist and, you know, just talk and get everything. That, you know, communication is key. So, I don't know what the conversation was, but I know he cussed. And then he tried to hurry up and cover his mouth. Even Loretta, when they were sitting there talking with the Bishop uh, Ron, she ended up saying shit or something. And he was like, and you saved and you talking like this? So, I'm, and, and I'm still back too. Um, you know, I will always talk when you say the sanctified and you all listen to church, you don't cuss. You don't do all that kind of stuff. 
So when they did it, I was like, what the hell? Whoa, 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 hold on. Especially when Dietrich did it. Especially when Dietrich did it being a pastor. I was kind of threw off on that one. So they go see this therapist or whatever because he said he wants to get somebody that um, wasn't in a circle, wasn't in a church like that. You know, just somebody that would be able to give them a clear point of view. But it seemed like he was getting irritated when it wasn't his point of view, what he wanted. Then he said something about he don't change. If he do any more, then he would be doing her job and he ain't no woman. Hmm. I understand where he's coming from because of the way he grew up and his father didn't do it. And then I understand where Dominique is coming from because she didn't have her father. So she wants him to not be like her father and be in be involved. Um, and I think that's important, especially when you have girls. When you have girls, I think you should be more involved. You know, letting them know daddy is everything. Can't nobody compare to my daddy. Because this is this sets their standards when they start dating. You are the first man in their life that they fall in love with. So when they have a man that's not attentive, not showing love, they don't expect it out of the relationship. When the man is only working and not coming home and showing that he is involved in home, that's what they're going to expect. You know what I'm saying? So that one kind of threw me off when, it, when he was acting like he didn't want to be more involved. But they end up coming to like a middle ground of him being more involved, changing a little bit more diapers. And I think she compromised on some stuff and that was that with them. She ended up, she did go talk to her friend before they went to the therapist. And she was, you know, you know, I was to her friend about the whole situation. So I was like, okay, this is cool. Her with somebody outside of the group. She also sat down and talked to Loretta about the stuff that was going on and pastors and all that kind of stuff. I don't like Loretta. I don't. It's something about her rubs me fucking wrong. Um, Christy and Dominique end up meeting up because they, you know, Christy still feels some kind of way of not showing up to the sippy tea. And she really likes Dominique and don't want nothing to come between that. But by the husband's being into it, kind of made her distance herself. So Loretta is having this cooking thing. So Chrissy, like, let me talk to Dominique before, you know, we get there so it won't be awkward. And so they have lunch, and it was beautiful. They was able to talk, no screaming matches. They trying to figure out how can they get their husbands to be cool. Because they like, you know, with us women, we could talk it out. But with the men, it's more ego and who's right and wrong or whatever. Um, I like how Dominique didn't blow up at Christy when Christy was trying to really explain her husband's side. Because like she said, her husband wasn't coming in a malicious place. He was hurt by what, what happened and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, that's what... So we hopefully they can get sit down and talk and figure this shit out. Pastor Jay had um, met with this, uh, I guess, homeless guy, one of his members at his church. Um, a homeless guy always comes in her gallery or whatever. So she wanted Pastor Jay to talk to him and get him back on track. And that's just what he did. And that's what I love about Pastor Jay because you see him going out ministering to people helping people and stuff like that and it don't look like it's a show it looked like it's very very sincere so that's what i really love about him um but yeah they have this homeless guy and you know he got him a room got him cleaned up he invited him to church i was so happy that he came to church because i didn't think he was gonna show up either because he was out of it. Even at the lunch when they went out and sat down and talked, he was out of it. So I didn't know if he really comprehended that he wanted him to come to church. But um, they, 
he talked to him about like the diamond spiral this boy being homeless and stuff was when he was 18 his mom had died so you know he basically thought his world was over his father don't talk to him anymore um i like how pastor ron said um he gave him a place a room to stay in so he could clean up and come to church he comes to church and pulls out this water bottle with alcohol in it i'm like but hell like he said he's a work this is a work in progress the steps to this especially when you're that far gone um so you know after the service you know he was talking to him then you just see the boy just going more and more out of it where they had to call the ambulance for him um i really really pray this boy get himself together i really do you know the way pastor jay cleaned him up cut his hair took him to rehab i really really pray that you know more come out of that situation because like I said, Pastor Jay has a very sincere heart. Him and his wife. I love their relationship, everything about it. Um, we had this lunch with the ladies, um, except for Lizette. And when they asked about where she was at, um, you, Loretta over there like, well, she... Um, we sat down with them so you could tell it didn't go no, that good because she's not here. I'm like, girl, you could have just said, she's not here. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but she didn't make it. That's all that has to be said. But to try to taint her to the other ladies irritates me. It does. It really irritates me. I feel like this. When people are together, and if it's a certain people person ain't in the group, if she's not there, we don't bring her up, whether we like her or not. She's off, to me, she's off limits. Because then that's how stuff get misconstrued. People then try to tell they side, and then it just be, it goes wrong. But, um, yeah. Why did all the ladies look at uh, Dominique funny? Because she said she was cooking spaghetti. Because this person was making beans, something, brownies. I was like, ew. Uh, gluten, first of all, ew. Um, Shrimp scampi. Okay, but I didn't see the problem with Dominique making spaghetti. First of all, she's young. Like she said, Deidre didn't marry her for her damn cooking, so hey. But um, if I missed anything, I, I apologize. Um, oh, yeah, I did miss anything. Let me talk about this last little situation. Bishop Jones ended up going to Louisiana. Because first he has this thing, this giveaway thing in, at his church. Then he tells Loretta how he has to go to Louisiana to go to the church where the man had got killed in his church for fornication. So I guess, hey, um, I'm not going to go there. But, oh, sorry, that's kind of itchy. But anyway, um, so he goes out to Louisiana with, you know, assistant of his and Stuff like that. I think he'll be thinking about buying the church because he don't want them, the people to lose the church and he wants the church to keep going. I remember this story being on the news about the man going to the church and shooting the pastor because I think the pastor was having sex with his wife or some stuff like that. So they, you know, go down there and they talk to his family and and um, people are saying that the wife has been grieved yet and she's bringing that out on the pulpit that she hasn't you know, properly grieved. So, yeah, he's trying to see what he can do about that of saving the church. And I thought that was cool of saving the church. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was really cool. And that's what I like to see about Pastor Jones. But, like I said, something about him rubs me the wrong way. Something about Loretta rubs me the wrong way. McClendon and them, we never see him or his wife. And I'd be like, okay, I understand he's busy, but why his wife just never been invited to the ladies together? Is it just me? I don't know. But tell me what you guys thought about Preachers of L.A. Um, I hope I did. I'm trying to think, but I hope I didn't miss anything that was really important. But if I did, leave it down in the comment section, and we can keep it going down up in the comment section. I'll reply. Um, but this is my review for Preachers of L.A. Season 2, Episode 2 and 3. Um, make sure you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Google Plus, Xbox Live. Everything I do is by the Ghetto View, T-H-A, not T-H-E, 
make sure you check out my cousin Mike B 801 and also my girl Scoochie Jones we all do Creatures of the LA reviews also check out Two Secret Flight Thousand and Marcus Williams they also do uh, Creatures of LA no we know how far when it comes to these reviews that's why I mention these people because we don't sugarcoat because they pastors and ministers and church wives and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I'll be back later for Braxton Family Values. I think I'm going to wait till tonight and then I'll put last week and this week together. Um, but yeah, talk to me and I'll talk to you back. Peace out. Oh, and keep praying for me. That I finally go home at least tomorrow. I've been in here since Tuesday. And I want to go home. But hey. My potassium level is low. My white blood count is high. All that kind of stuff. So they just came and tested me at 11.30. Said they're going to come back in another hour to test me again. And hopefully the test is so good where I can go home. Alright.